Immersion is a complete learning experience. It's definitely eye-opening, I would say. Ooh, yes. Yes, yes. It's just been uh, an area that I've seen significant impact, both during the week of and in the relationships built, but also the long impact that it seems to have on kids. It's about how do we do missions here. That can be um, sitting with the elderly and playing bingo, or reaching out to refugees, or doing service projects. You experience the way other people live, you see what they have to deal with, and you just kind of touch base with people in a way that you typically don't do. I'll start off as a leader, it was powerful for me. I guess you learn how like privileged you are to have all the things you do. It's like there's so many ways to show the community God's love. And it's just really stretching in that way. When the Harrigans and I got together uh, to brainstorm uh, doing a local missional project, we decided we wanted to really reach into our community and expose ourselves and our youth to people that are generally unlike us, whether that's racially or culturally or uh, socioeconomically. We want to immerse ourselves into the world that God loves, but we might not naturally spend time with. We traveled Thursday afternoon after doing ministry here in Fort Wayne took a caravan of vehicles into Gary. Gary is industrialized and rough and city, and we were going to a section on the outskirts of Gary, three blocks from Lake Michigan, bordering on the whole Dunes State Park. So we wanted to surprise them with the beauty of where we're going. And we wanted to take what we've been doing at Villages of Hannah with Chrissy Link and her missional community called J29. She also does that at an apartment complex in Gary. We were aware uh, that Gary has a long-term reputation or stereotype that isn't real positive. Every year at Immersion, about three-fourths or four-fifths the way through as a leader, I get to this tipping point a little bit where I've got to get some alone time. I am just feeling taxed, emotionally drained, more usually more mentally drained with all the logistics. So everybody gets to the beach, all our groups are here, leaders are in place, and I take off for a run down the beach. When we got to Gary, we just went to the beach, Indiana Beach, and then we went to this place called Park Shore Commons and we basically ate there, ate dinner, and then we had a long debrief. We came together, we'd had the ride to Geary, we were kind of what they call debriefing, talking about what we would be doing the next day. I looked at my watch and realized uh, Mark hasn't been back on this run for another 20 minutes or so, and 20, he went 20 minutes too long, and so I ran outside to look for him, and I saw police officers surrounding our vans. One of the vans got robbed. Mark was on a run during that time on the beach and he came back and right as he got back, they like saw him and then they scattered into the woods. In fact, I saw people, you know, between three and five people running out of the woods and down a road behind the apartment complex. And so I thought I just averted a robbery because I came upon that and people ran away and everything looked to be good until I saw a window missing in the back of the van. I heard someone say, uh, he, there's a problem right now uh, downstairs. One of the vans um, you know, has been broken into and the police are there. And at that time, they didn't say anything to the kids. That was just some quietness amongst the adults. So I ran down and asked Mark, hey, what, what happened? And he said, someone broke into the vans. And so I immediately ran into the forest with him and uh, we started looking around and we found all the bags laying everywhere. They kept us all upstairs because there really wasn't a need at that time to come and tell us what had happened. But, and I couldn't tell you the length of time, but eventually the adults came up and Mark came up and explained uh, what had happened. The back window was busted out clean, broken glass everywhere when we actually saw it. We had a whole bunch of stuff scattered everywhere. Some people's bags got ransacked, some phones and wallets were stolen. I had $30 stolen. All of my stuff was dumped out in the ground and then searching through my bag later finding some clothes that weren't even mine like what is this? All my stuff was in the van that was stolen and my book bag was stolen out of the van that night. And uh, it was pretty scary for some people. Me and my friends kind of huddled up in a little circle and we were crying but they were praying. The mood changed a bit. It became one where there was fear. Uh, some of the students that, really, that had things taken from them uh, 
really felt um, afraid and even myself, I did feel afraid. In fact, when we found uh, one of the young ladies stuffed the next day in the light, some of our teen leaders went back out, our student leaders went back out, found it up on a dune hill, found her stuff. I went up later looking for more stuff and I found her name tag. And it just struck me this thing where it's out in the middle of nowhere on this hill in the woods, somebody's name tag. It's like, that's that person. It is such an unkind feeling of being violated. Like you, you do not matter and uh, I put it in my pocket because it does matter. And then all my stuff was dirty and like had been in the sand in the woods and so that was, yeah, it's just very weird. And I just needed to uh, go out, get some fresh air because I had so much emotional tension inside of me. And instantly I just get out there and I just kind of fall to the ground crying, um, just letting out all this emotion and anger. When some of the students found out, man, it really, it really shook people up initially and uh, I think there was, there was a voice that was kind of spoken over us, uh, we felt from the enemy that was saying, hey, you're not wanted in Gary, and, and uh, it's dangerous here. And I, I remember I was even hearing some of the whispers in my head, and I was just really wondering, hey, was this the right idea to, to go here or not? I had a really hard time with that. I actually went to Sheila Harrigan and Pastor Mark and told them both, as a mom, watching her and realizing that she's never experienced anything like this before and how crushing this is to realize the world isn't good. I wanted to take her and I wanted to leave. And I, I told him, I said, you need to talk me off of this ledge. I was one of the people who was probably the most freaked out. Um, I had a panic attack just from the van and then going to the place we were staying. And at the time I thought, oh, this is like, I'm sheltered. So this is why I'm freaking out. But really I think I realized like there's a like real life bad guy like a true enemy out there and who wants to get us and so that freaked me out.